for all the attendees. If uh, I will be monitoring the chat, and if you have any comments or questions during the uh, workshop, please let me please put it in the chat, and I will try and respond. I will keep track of your questions, and we will have a question and answer period. Uh, hopefully, there will be time at the end of the workshop. And I will try and capture any of your questions in the chat as we go along. So please feel free to use the chat. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. My name is David Ellis, to those that don't know me, and I'd like to welcome you to our workshop on sweet potato viral disease management. The workshop is part of our ongoing project entitled Darwin Clean and Share Sweet Potato Project, funded by the Darwin Initiative, which is a UK government grant program focused on protecting diversity and the natural environment through locally based projects worldwide. This project is entitled Clean and Share because it serves as a model for the collection and long term conservation of sweet potato farmer land races from Madagascar and Zambia as well as the repatriation of disease-free sweet potato vines back to smallholder farmers in both countries. The partners of the project include FIFA Manor, a Malagasy Research and Development Institute in Madagascar, and the Zambia Agricultural Research Institute, ZARI, a department in the Zambian Ministry of Agriculture. These partners were responsible for the collection of local sweet potato land races and the shipment of these land races to the International Potato Center Laboratories in Nairobi, Kenya, where the land races were put into in vitro and phytosanitary cleaned. Once cleaned, the land races were repatriated to Madagascar and Zambia under the care of the project partners, FIFA Man or Anzari, where they were multiplied and will be distributed to farmers for cultivation in the next four to six weeks. The phytosanitary cleaned land races were also shipped to the SIP, uh, to the International Potato Center Gene Bank in Lima, Peru, where they will be incorporated into the Global Sweet Potato Genetic Resources Collection, which is held in trust for humanity under the FAO International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Once at, in Lima, the land races will be available worldwide for training, research, and breeding under the treaty. The long-term secure conservation of the land races will be ensured through the Global Plant Cryopreservation Initiative, where the land races will be stored in a usable frozen state at 196 degrees centigrade, available virtually into perpetuity under the auspices of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. This workshop is intended to introduce the participants to management practices which will help farmers manage and lessen disease pressure and disease damage on farm. We hope, to get, we hope the knowledge gained from the workshop can be spread by the participants to farmers receiving the disease-free sweet potato vines as part of the project and also through to other farmers throughout the region. The Darwin Clean and Share Sweet Potato Project is administered by the Global Crop Diversity Trust in Bonn, Germany. And on behalf of the project, I would like to extend our very sincere gratitude to all partners of the project, FIFA Manor, Zari, SIP Nairobi, SIP Lima, the Crop Trust, and the CGIAR. Now, without further ado, I would like to present our outstanding instructor for the workshop. Segundo Fuentes is an associate scientist in the virology unit of the Crop and System Sciences Division of the International Potato Center, where he has worked since 1987. Segundo is a molecular is a <laughs> biologist and microbiologist with a master's degree in phytopathology. His 35 plus year research focus has been on viral diseases with projects on the characterization and identification of viruses, the development and validation of diagnostic methods, virus indexing, viral synergism, and their impact on crop degradation, a very important subject, 
and the screening of genetic resources for bioethics. Segundo actively supervises both undergraduate and graduate students' research thesis and carries out national and international training in virus and disease-related topics. He is an invited reviewer of manuscripts for several peer-reviewed scientific journals. From August 2019 to December 2022, he was also a part-time professor at the National Agrarian University La Molina in Peru as a member of the Department of Phytopathology, Faculty of Agronomy. Segundo is a good friend with whom I have had the pleasure to work with and have relied on his expertise for well over a decade. Segundo is an excellent and much sought after instructor, something I know firsthand as we co-taught virus detection workshops in several African countries. It is indeed my pleasure to introduce Segundo Fuentes. Thank you, David, for this introduction. Hello, everybody in each country you are. So for me, it's a pleasure to share this time and an opportunity to learn also from both, both sides, from my side sharing my experience, but also from yours, because at the end of this presentation, we had an interaction between or among us. So I also uh, hope to share something from you. Okay, I share my screen, please. Yeah, you can see me, so you can see my presentation. Let me check. Can you see my screen? Great. Yes, we can. Okay. So <clears throat> this is an um, interesting topic that we are talking today because we are dealing with one of the pathogens to which we can see visually because they are very, very small, but they cause severe symptoms on sea potatoes uh, crops. So uh, this time I had divided my presentation in three parts. One of them is to note about the viruses, why the viruses are important in sweet potato, how these viruses are disseminated. And the second part is related to recognize symptoms caused by virus infection and also how we can detect those viruses. And the last part is just to focus on the control of viral disease. The first two parts are the basic knowledge to understand why we are applying measures for controlling the viruses. So I am starting with the first part. So you can see here, let me put the pointer first. So we're comparing the size of different pathogens with a sex plants. Here we can observe this is the plant cells, and this is the head of the nematodes, this is the mycelium of the fungus, this is the bacteria, phytoplasma, and here are the viruses. As you can see, viruses are microscopic pathogens which affects the plants causing diseases. So these viruses are mainly composed by two components, the nucleic acids and the proteins which protect this nucleic acid. So these nucleic acids and proteins, we are using as target when we are identifying the viruses. Also, viruses are parasites. Why? because these viruses, viruses only replicate in living cells. So when one virus is coming, infecting the plants, they becoming uh, uh, infecting all the plants, okay? The only way that we can eliminate the virus from those plants in the field is just by eliminating the plants. 
because there is no chemical, there is no any uh, solutions that you can apply in the field in order to control viruses in the plants. As you can see here, this is the equipment. This equipment, this is an electron microscopy, which is using to amplify the size of the viruses thousand and thousands times. So that's the only way we can observe the virus particle. Here you can observe this is the virus particle for one of the viruses, important virus on sweet potato, is very motile. This is for chlorotistan. This is for the pegomo viruses, sweet potato liqueur. And this is another virus. As you can see here, viruses have different shapes and different sizes. The most important is the size is very small, so we can see these viruses. Just to have an idea how small are the viruses. So see, we are taking this virus particle and join one behind another in, in a line, we will need more than 1,200 virus particles in order to reach one millimeter in size. So you have an idea how small are the viruses. The principal components of the virus are the nucleic acid, which is the genome. This genome is important because this is using for the viruses in the plants in order to produce different proteins. One of these proteins is the coprotein, which protects the nucleic acid. But they also produce another proteins that have different functions. One of them is, is related with the transmission by insects, for instance. Others are related to the movement of the virus in the plant, cell to cell in the plant. Other has to be with the with a symptom expression in the plant. So this is important to know. When this protein protects the nucleic acid, they make the virus particle that uh, we can observe in the electron microscopy like this one. So see so we can to detect the virus, we can detect the core protein or the nucleic acid because this is a specific for each virus. So we can observe here, for instance, so we are using molecular detections like uh, PCR, LAN, or another, we can detect the nucleic acid. So we, so we want to detect the coprotein of the virus, we are using serological tests or ELISA tests. Also, it's important that viruses in the field, they disseminate as virus particles among the plants not as nucleic acid, is a complete virus particle. So here, this is one point that you have to consider later in the control is, the, the best way to control the viruses is to prevent that this virus infect the plants. So we have to prevent the establishment, the development, and dispersal of viruses in any crops. That's the huge case in order to the in order to control viruses in any crops, not only on sweet potato. So this is the kind of symptoms that viruses cause in the in the plants. As I mentioned you, we can observe the viruses by our eyes. Only we can observe the symptoms they they induce in the infected plants. Here we can also this is like vein clearing on sweet potato, also vein clearing surrounding by these uh, purple pigments, or some chlorotis spots surrounding also by these purple rings. In some cases we can observe these liquorings or rolling of the uh, or the leaves in the affected plants. In other cases, we can observe this mosaic. This mosaic is a al alternancy between dark green and light green. So you can observe here, this is a mosaic. But also we can observe in the very strong affected plant, the stunting, 
reducing in the size of the plants and also combined with some different mosaics, lead formation and so on. This is one of the plants showing infection compared with another one. This is an infected, this is probably a non-infected, but you can observe the site here. This plant no stunting, also chlorosis, leaf reduction, and leaf deformation. This is typical for the combination of two viruses, as I explain to you later. So, is our viruses important? Look at this one. When we are taking a stem cutting or roots from the plant, infected plant, to use as planting for the next season or next uh, cropping season. So, if viruses are in the area, they are affecting the plants every time. So, the accumulation of the viruses in the plant, because they are propagated several times from the same viral plant sources, the viruses accumulate in the plants and they cause degenerations of the sweet potato plant. What means the degeneration? Because over the time, those affected plants produce less and less. Here, the effects of the viruses in the, in the production. You can observe here, this is a apparently healthy plant because in the field, we can say this plant is healthy because we don't know, probably this is, uh, has been infected very late in the, in the season. So we can say, but this is, compare this one with this one, we can observe the effects of the viruses, but also in the, in the production. So they affect the production, reduce the production of the plants. Another view, how the viruses are reducing the yield, here, this is the, the healthy roots coming from the healthy plants, 30 plants. Okay, this is the root coming from 30 plants, healthy. This is from infected plants, infected with sweet potato chlorotis tan and cucumber mosaic virus, other infected with chlorotis tan and sweet potato mild spectrum virus, and so on, chlorotis tan with virus C6. So you can observe here the infection reduce the production, but not only affect the production, but also the quality and the aspects of the roots. Here we can observe this is a root affected by coming from plant affected with viruses in which we can observe this cracking in the roots, but also this internal necrosis in the roots. This is corn called internal cork. In some cases, uh, our researchers in Australia, they demonstrate that this growing depressions in the roots is also caused by virus infection in the plants. So as you can see, viruses have effects not only the production, but also in the quality of the roots. So far, more than 30 viruses have been reporting around the world affecting sweet potato. The most common is when these viruses are in single infection. I mean, when one plant is infected by one of these 30 viruses, plants usually are symptomatic. So we can observe anything. Only when the plant is infected by two or three or more viruses, they cause severe symptoms, as you can observe here. So when this severe disease occurs, they affect the production higher. At the moment, we are considering these viruses are the most important in sweet potato because poti viruses, crini viruses, and begomo viruses are why distributes in different countries. They are infecting the plant in misinfections, and also because they are transmitted by 
insects we call vectors. Yeah? The insect vectors that transmit viruses are white flies and aphids. For instance, these spotty viruses are transmitted by aphids, and these screeny virus and begomo virus are transmitted by white flies. Here you can observe is the list of some of the viruses reported so far. So as you can see here, most of the virus belongs to different genus, uh, genus in the in the viruses, potiviruses, hypomoviruses, kiniviruses, and so on. Some of them are transmitted by aphids, those highlighting in blue here. Others are transmitted by white fly those highlighting with yellow one here. Another characteristic of the virus is that some of them are worldwide distributed, like this potivirus and this kidney virus and so on. Other viruses have been reported in several countries, other just restricted to some countries, as you can observe here in this list. So, 30 viruses, it's difficult to control all of them. When we are controlling viruses, we are focus, focusing only in the most important viruses. Remember that one, because I discuss it later. Some example of diseases reporting in different countries, for instance, here, the sweet potato virus disease. In, this is one disease, uh, present in different countries worldwide. The chlorotid dwarf, which is reported, has been reported in Argentina, and the camotic culotte in Philippines. As you can observe, these diseases are caused by two, three, or more viruses. The common that they have is the chlorotid stand, sweet potato chlorotid stand, as you can observe here, here, but also here, are always present in these diseases. So we know now that sweet potato chlorotistan is very important. Why? Because they interact with other viruses to cause severe symptoms. This is a leak of the viruses, potiviruses, hypomoviruses, carlaviruses, cucumovirus, begomo, cabemo, and solendo viruses, that when they are interact with chlorotistan, they produce synergistic interaction. This synergistic interaction produces severe disease, severe symptoms. They affect uh, the, the production very high. But also, they promote the, the concentration of these viruses increasing the plants. So not only affect the production, but also favor the replication of the virus in the tissue, plants, so vector like aphids and white flies can easily disseminate the viruses from this plant. Let's see some example of synergistic interactions. Look at this one, this is chlorotic tank with these four different potiviruses. They cause, as you can observe here, in different uh, cultivars, severe symptoms like mosaics, leaf deformation, and leaf distortion. When they chlorotistan interact with cucumber mosaic virus or carla viruses, they produce, in the first case, very severe symptoms as mosaic, leaf deformation, and also this kind of rugosity. In the other cases, they produce some kinds of necrosis on the leaf. Also, chlorotistan can interact with Bagna virus, Cabemo, and Solendo virus. What happened here? These viruses increase in concentration, and also, when that happens, plants affected, sweet potato plants show symptoms, like this one, liqueur or this one, vein clearing, or which can turn, in the case of hypomeracetosa, turn brown, 
this means necrosis in the squam. Okay? So remember, synergistic interaction favor the multiplication of one of the virus involved in the synergistic interaction. So this may more difficult in order to control diseases. What happened, for instance, if you had one plant infected with two viruses and then coming the third viruses? So as you can observe here, this is this disease is caused by two viruses, but when another virus is coming in this infection, so the symptoms are severe, increase in severity. So the plant produces less as well. Okay, so how viruses are disseminated now? Different ways. In the case of sweet potato, I'm not concerned about transmission by contact. This is occur only when you are, for instance, inoculating sap from the sweet potato to another plant, like solanaceous, for instance. But I know I not take care about the, this transmission in sweet potato plant be, between or among things. I explain you later. Transmission also, they can be transmitted by vector, insect vector. As I mentioned you, aphids and wildflies are the vector for sweet potato viruses. There are one report of sweet potato ring spot viruses in some countries that probably they are transmitted by nematodes. The most important also here is the transmission by planting material. Because if we are taking storage fruits, stain cutting, and see this material coming from infected plants, of course, you are transmitting, disseminating the viruses to another fields. There are only one report the one viruses, sweet potato liquor viruses. This is a pegomo virus, has been reported to be transmitted by botanical seed. This is a problem from, from breeder, for instance, because they had to take care that the plant they are crossing that better varieties are not infected with this virus. In the case of transmission by contact, as I mentioned you, this is only, uh, I think it's important when we are mechanically transmitting to another species, for instance, sweet potato to venta, Nicotiana ventamiana, for instance, because viruses are usually in the greenhouse, is maintaining long-term in different uh, species of plants, known sweet potato. So I'm not too much concerned about the transmission by contact between plants, but as these viruses, the concentration of these viruses can be increased when they are in synergistic interactions. Remember, I say you, these viruses can increase the amounts in the plant tissue. So, in that case, I had to take consideration in order to think that this kind of viruses could be transmitted by contacts between plants. Okay, so we had to take care about the clothing of the of the farmer, the tool they are using, because if they are contaminated with the viruses when they are using this in another plant, close to another plant, or in another field, they can disseminate the viruses as contaminations. So, if we would like to control this kind of viruses, we have to avoid the contact contamination, and also to reduce the working of the people in the sweet potato field, just to avoid contacts between infected plant and then with healthy plant. Also, viruses can be disseminated by insects as vector. Here we have the 
aphids and white flies. So the most important is Mrs. persica and the Mishatabase. Why? Because when they are feeding in the plant, they had two times. One of them is just the, the insect proof the, the plant in order to see, see, the, see this plant lie for feeding. If so, they introduce the style to the flowing in order to cut the sacs for feeding. Okay? So see the plant is infected with viruses, one of the viruses are replicated in the phloems, other viruses are replicated or are infecting cells in the surface of the leaf, for instance, epidermis or parenchyma. So in these two times of feeding of the insects in the plant, they can take the viruses and they can transmit See, these viruses like potiviruses or fairy motel, as a specific example, when they prove the plants, this particle sticks in the tick of this style, and then see these insects move to another plant, they can transmit the virus immediately. So they taste and acquire and transmit the viruses in very, very quick. In the other case, they had they had more time in order to acquire the virus from the flowing and transmit also the virus from the flowing. Okay, in the first time, these insects transmit the viruses short time, no more. For instance, uh, minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and so. On. In the other case, when this virus is acquired. This insect can be transmitted the viruses longer, for instance, 30 days. Okay? So when the virus is transmitted in the first, in this, uh, in this first case, we call transmission in non-persistent ways. In the other case, we call transmission in persistent way. Okay? Also, the, the white flies also feeding from the phloem. So this is the case, for instance, for the Begomo viruses. So remember, what I explain to you this one, because when you are controlling, so you are controlling better one of these kind of viruses and no different viruses, okay? There, there are another kinds of transmission by insect, by white flies, which is in between. This is semi-persistent transmission because the, here the white fly also feeding from the phloem, but the viruses are transmitting no longer, just only hours or days. This is the case for chlorotis time. So look at this one. See, we can control viruses which are transmitting by aphids. We have, we have to spray insecticide using yellow traps, using barrier, biological barrier like maize, for instance, or using Variety, we are resistant to the infection and viruses transmitted by this vector, okay? Look at this one. This is just one practical example how the viruses are transmitted in non-persistent way. This is one plant infected with very remote. This insect, this aphid is feeding here just short time and then move to one plant, two, three, four, and five plants. This insect can only transmit the viruses to the first plant. And then they clean the, the style, and then when feeding to another plant, they are not able to transmit the viruses. This is non-persistent way. In the persistent way, it's different because when this, Insect, the white flies <clears throat> feeding in the plant, they can transmit the virus to the one, two, three, four, and five plants when they are feeding from one to another one. Because remember, the insects are able to transmit the virus longer, hours, days, or 30 days, for instance. So, if we come to control, it's better to control this kind of viruses by insecticide than when we compare with another viruses, 
like non-persistent transmission. So this is important because if you are, if you would like to control fairy model using insecticide, you are wasting money because you can control the problem there. Only you can control more efficiently begomo viruses or this greeny virus, Torotistan or Ligur. <clears throat> the other way to transmit viruses is through the planting material. Why? Because as I mentioned you, when the plant is infected, the, the, the virus becomes systematic in the plant. So see, we are taking a stain cutting or we are taking a store root to plant new fields. So the viruses that are in this part of the plant are transmitted to the new plants, causing also system infection. See, we are doing the same season by season. What we are doing is just to accumulate viruses in the plant. So in this case, if we want to control viruses here, we have to use high quality planting material, those coming from plants that have been free from viruses in the, in the lab and then propagated as healthy material, planting material, and then given to the farmer, yes, of course. But also, in this case, also we can use resistant varieties. Remember, res resistant varieties are very difficult to be infected by the viruses because they affect the replication, for instance, of the viruses in the, in the plants. So how viruses are disseminated? Remember this one? See, we are using infected plant material this is not only we are propagating or disseminating the problem, but also because this infected plant is also source of viruses from which the insect can take the virus from here and move to another ones, another crops, another fields close to the one you are growing these plants. Also, because aphids and white flies have been demonstrated that they are vector for viruses, see they are present, that there is a problem there. Also, in the case of Peru or another, another countries, when you are taking a stain cutting and you move without any sanitary control, they are moving the problem, they are moving the viruses from one field to another field. Remember that one. So see what, see we want to control the viruses because they are important, we can control the 30 viruses that have been reported. We have to focus only on those which, which are very important. So how we know those viruses are important because they cause GL production, or uh, reduce the, the, the production of the plants. Also, because those viruses are wide distributed or they are disseminated very quick, for instance, by insect, or they are very difficult to control. For instance, because viruses not only infect sweet potatoes, they can infect another weeds, uh, wild species of hypomeracetosa, which may be difficult to control. So we can focus on those viruses. I think we can stop this first part. So the room is open for questions. Please, the, uh, Ellis, Dave, David, say me if there is any question in the chat, please. Thank you, Segundo. Do any of the participants have any questions? You can put it in the chat and we can uh, uh, I address can see it the, there. Yeah, I can see the chat because I I in the chat as panelists. 
So there is there is difference on that one. Can you say me what you can see in the chat? Yeah, there is nothing in the chat yet, Segundo. So, so no problem. I think, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll take questions at the end. Oh yeah, since, okay. How's that let sound? Me, let, me, let me go with the second part. Okay, thank you. This has been very good. Unless anyone has a question now. Let okay, me, let's go on ahead then. Yeah, let me open the second part. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'm sharing again and say me if you can see my screen, please. You can see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, this is the, the second part. So here, what we are talking about is about symptoms that virus cause when infect the plant. But also the most important to know, as I mentioned you, we can control all the viruses. We have to know which viruses are infecting our plants in order to control. So the only way to, to know which viruses are infected as one is by using <clears throat> methods for detecting the viruses there. So this is the second part we are talking about. First, as a, this is only to explain when the plants are infected with viruses, for instance, in the growing season, this is a healthy plant. When one aphids or white flies coming here and feeding in the plant, they transmit the viruses. The viruses move in the plant, okay? They, they becoming systemic. So this infection, this first infection, we call primary infection. So the plant, like the plant, show primary symptom. You are taking part of these plants, stem cutting or store roots, for the next season, to grow the next season, viruses move from this contaminated part of the plants to the new, to the new plants coming. So viruses also coming systemic here. So this kind of infection is called secondary infection. This secondary infection induce secondary symptoms. What I say to you, because as you can see in these figures, secondary infections are more severe than those infected, showing primary infections. So we can, because of the severity of the disease in the plants, we can later to know if the problem is coming because one aphids or insects coming to the plant and infect the plant, or si we are taking contaminating planting material from a previous crops to the new ones. Because in this case, because of the strong of the symptoms, we can say, okay, this is secondary infection. So the problem that we are having in my field, for instance, is because I taking part of the infected stem cutting or roots from the previous crops, okay? So when this happened, as I, as I say you uh, in the first part, the only way to control this problem is by using high quality planting material or using resistant varieties. Look at this one, this is a disease. So, so you can observe here, which one is showing primary symptom? This is in the left. You can observe here. You can see is chlorotics. Most of the plant is showing chlorosis, but the side is no. The symptom is not so strong compared with this one. Observe this is here. You can observe chlorotic and stunting. So we can, <clears throat> by visually, we can know. See the problem in my field is because 
my plant has been infected because some insect moves inside my field or because I taking infected material for planting the new crops, okay? The new fields. So what, what kind of symptoms we can observe uh, inducing by virus infection? As you can see here, this is a, you can also here is chlorosing, stunting, leaf reduction, deformation. This is a close-up of this plant in which we can observe this leaf reduction and deformation as well. This is leaf cooling, symptom of leaf cooling or roll. Huh? This kind of symptom is associated with infection by pegomo viruses. Remember that one, liquor or rolling. Okay? Pegomo viruses is like sweet potato liquor viruses. It's one pegomo virus. Infected plants can show also these kind of symptoms as chlorotic spots or purpurines. Also showing rolling down. So the leaves roll to the downside of the leaves, like this one. Also, plant infected plant can show vein clearing, like this one, with different patterns. Here we can observe chlorotic spots or chlorotic rings in some cases. Vein clearing is observing also like netting in some cases. This is when the, the variety, sweet potato variety is very susceptible to virus infection, we can observe that one. Chlorotis pop, purpurins, mosaics. This is the uh, dark, dark green, alternate with light green, okay? This is a mosaic. But also we can observe here is mosaics, Leaf reduction, leaf deformation, cutting. Also, here we can also vein clearing. In some cases, also virus infections can produce severe mosaics, like this one, or also we can observe necrosis in some cases. So I see the virus is causing this necrosis is present in some countries, not in all countries. So is this kind of symptom can be confused with uh, plant senescence leaves because senescence leaves also show necrosis, okay? So you are going to record the symptoms, you can use these abbreviations for those symptoms showing some chlorosis in different ways. Chlorosis, all the leaves, or chlorotis spot, chlorotis spot, intervena chlorosis, vein clearing, or vein binding. Or those showing some leaves uh, deformation or distortion, like deformation, reduction, rugosity, starting, roll up, and roll down, and so on. So, this is just to help you in order to record the symptoms you are observing in the field. So if you are visiting the sweet potato field, try to record this one because <clears throat> this information can be used later in order to recognize which viruses are causing the disease in your field potato fields, okay? So like this one, for instance, this is a apparently healthy, this is an infected plant, but we can observe at the first glance is the stunting, the chlorosis. And then we can observe this uh, lead distortion. We can observe this purpling. This is uh, purple, purple color there. We call purpling and um, also we can observe vein clearing. In some cases, we can observe vein clearing, 
to the dispo, to the urine, so you can use this abbreviation in order to record the symptom you are observing in the plants. Also, mosaic lead formation, roll down in these cases, roll down. Oh, this is that we are, we have success in in Ayura. This is in Papua New Guinea. Plant infected, showing vein clearing and chlorosis, or vein clearing, chlorosis spots, some purpurine, some rugosity in the leaves. Um, also, the kind is vein clearing. Okay? What what happened here? So not all the symptoms you are observing is caused by viruses. This problem is a somatic mutation. <clears throat> this problem is because of the plants. In some cases, they are mutates showing this kind of symptom. This problem are not transmitted, are not disseminated to other plants, okay? Take care on this one. Also, you can also here, this is somatic mutation, <clears throat> which is not transmitted because, see, we are grafting this section of this plant in the hypomea cetosa, we can observe nothing, okay? So this distortion of the leaves is, is similar when you are applying too much insecticide or chemical to the plant, so the plant uh, are Toxic to those chemicals, so plant also can react like this one. This is similar to toxicity by herbicides or insecticide when you are applying too much. Okay, so again, control of viruses. As I mentioned you, for controlling viruses, we need to note which viruses are present in your field. The only way to know which viruses are affecting your field, your plants, is to use any detection methods to know which viruses it infected your plant. So we can use indicator plants as hypomera cetosa, or we are using serological tests which detect the protein of the viruses, or we are using different molecular tests which are detecting the nucleic acid. Of the virus. So here, this is the indicator plan. This is hypomea cetosa. You can use this one. I explain you in a practical way when we are doing the positive selection. So you can confirm using your plan you are selecting is infected or not with viruses. So you don't have uh, too much condition to do molecular detection. You don't have. Uh, serological test to do. You can grab here and observe if the plant reacts or not with symptoms. This is more practical, okay? Because this indicator plants is universal for detecting sweet potato viruses. How you can do the grafting? Just to take a portion of the sweet potato and then you can insert this one in the, in the stem or the hypomia cetosa after making an excision here and then you cover this grafting by paraffin, for instance, and then cover with plastic bags in order to keep the humidity for two or three days. And then you maintain the plants in a protected area, like a greenhouse, greenhouse, and so on. So after that, you are applying also as a preventive Insecticide, this is to control any entrance to this area of wildflies and aphids because they can take viruses from plants outside to inside, okay? So after that, so hypomea cetosa can react showing this kind of symptoms as they clearing, for instance. So this kind of infection has been associated to infection by potiviruses in hypomea cetosa. Or hypomea cetosa can occur these faint chlorotic spots. This kind of symptom can be associated by Carla virus infections. 
or plants can be produce different kinds of symptoms. Like this one, pain clearing and rugosity. Or they can also reacting with some necrosis, like vein necrosis, chlorotic spots, uh, which turn later uh, brown color. So these kinds of symptoms in hypomyositosa after grafting have been associated by the infection by cabemo viruses and solendo viruses. Remember, this is a general, this is the, the genus, the genus for the virus. Which virus are included in this one? So you go to the first part, because I, I guess uh, David can share this presentation to you later. So you can go to the first part of the presentation. In the list, I show you the list of the viruses. So you can compare which viruses is included in this genus of virus, right? Also, hypomethetosa can show some kinds of chlorosis, being intervenal chlorosis or rolling of the lips. This kind of symptoms has been associated by infection of the viruses. Well, so you had a chance to use serological tests, you can use one kit. In the kits that of course pick according distributes to different countries. This kit is is to detect 10 viruses, which are listed here. The reaction is in nitrocellulose membrane. That's the reason why we, we call this one nitro NCM ELISA key because it's coming from nitrocellulose membrane. Okay. So the reaction is taken at uh, this one, purple column. So let's see. First, you collect the sample and then you can process the sample in the lab by grinding the, the tissue, spotting on the membrane. So you are detecting two different viruses. You have to spot in twice, like this one. So sample one, sample one, sample two, sample two, and so on. So you are replicating the spotting of them in the membrane, okay? Then you can block in this one, prepare the first antibody, we recognize the viruses. This is a specific. So you want to detect 10 viruses, you must have 10 different antibodies. In this case, we are detecting two viruses, so we are preparing two antibodies, right? Later, you are incubating, washing the membrane, and using the second antibody. These second antibodies recognize or react with, again, the first antibody. So at the end, when you develop the reaction, you can observe this kind of color, purple color. Purple color means positive reaction. For instance, see this membrane has been tested for very mote. So I can say, plan number one is not infected with very mote. Plan number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are infected with very mote and so on. So the intensity of the color means more intensity, higher the virus concentration in the plants. For instance, the, the second plant we are testing have more viruses than the four plants and so on. Okay? So for the color, we can, we can say which plant is infected and, and by the intensity of the color, we can say which plant have more viruses than other. So this is using the ELISA kits in minimal condition. Look at this one. This test has been done in the room in one hotel in Salomon's Islands. So we need only to, to take water because in the kit you have all the components for detecting the viruses. So you can obtain the containers in the market and so on. So here we can only use one small table to grind the sample, the spotting of the sample 
the membrane, watching, adding the first antibody, and also developing the reaction, as you can see here. So you can observe the reaction. Purple color mean positive, no color mean negative. So all this test is done at room temperature. So that's no matter. So you need only water in order to use the kids and minimal condition also to do the test. But the most important here that you must know is so you combine the detection from the Kato plant and you take the sample from the hypomeacetosa to do the ELISA, this detection is more reliable to detect the viruses. Why? Because you are doing the test from sweet potato, as in this case. This sweet potato is infected, but this is symptomless. The concentration here of the virus is low compared with the concentration of the viruses in the hypomeacetosa tissue. Okay, so more chance to detect the viruses if you combine indicator plan by serology. Of course, see the, if the sweet potato shows severe symptoms, that no matter because you can detect the viruses from that one. The problem, the problem is when the plants not show symptoms because concentration in the virus is very low, so they can be detected by the ELISA test. In spite, the plant is infected with the virus. Regarding the molecular detection here, the molecular detection detects the nucleic acid. So to do this test, except for the lamp, you have to extract in the lab the nucleic acid from the plant tissue. So you collect sample and then extract the, the nucleic acid from the, from the plant. This nucleic acid can be amplified. So PCR, the molecular amplify the nucleic acids, okay? The PCR amplify not all the genome, all the nucleic acids of the plant, just only one fraction. So using this equipment, using some regions in one tubes. So the reaction is taking in these tubes inside the machine. So in this case, the nucleic acid is replicated in vitro. Each time, twice, twice, see so you multiply twice per twice per two, per two, per two, 30 times. So you have plenty of molecules of nucleic acid in order to observe as running in the agarose gel in the lab. So you can observe here if this is PCR products amplified by PCR. So this is positive, no bonds, no amplification means negative. So remember, this is just only just to show you when you are talk, uh, heard about PCR. This is a molecular detection of viruses, which is uh, replicate the viruses in one tubes several times, in, in which the nucleic acid is amplified until 1,000 million, for instance, copies that which is enough to observe as running in agarose gel as a bunch here. The other one is doing PCR in real time. The difference between the first and the second is that here we don't need to run agarose gel to observe the amplification. Here we are using is one component in the reaction which produce fluorescence. The fluorescence is measured by the machine and we can observe in the screen of the computer like this cure, amplification cure. So the reaction is taking in this machine. At the same time, we can observe how this amplification is coming in real time because in the moment 
they are amplifying, we are observe this reaction. That's the reason why it is called real-time PCR. The other one is using LAM. LAM here replicates part of the nucleic acid of the virus in different ways that the first and the second does or do. Because here we are using different uh, chemical, but the similarity with the second one is because here also they produce some fluorescence. This fluorescence we can offer in this, in this equipment as an amplification curve, like this one. So you observe this curve mean positive, see the curve is flat or no, no curve, or the line is flat, that means negative uh, reaction. So no viruses in the plant. Lung has been now adapted as a test to do detection of the viruses in place. So you can take this machine, take the, re the, re the reaction in the field, in the greenhouse, in the airport, something like that, where you can test, would you like to test the, see the plant is infected or not with any specific virus. So this is important because now people who are involved in seed production scheme are using this machine in order to confirm if the plant they are observing is infected or not with viruses in the same place, in the greenhouse, in the field, and so on. Okay. The other one, the other one is, is one techniques that is using to detect any viruses that are affecting the potato plant. So if the plant is infected with 10 viruses, we can detect, detect the, the 10 viruses using these techniques. Because here, we are using the mechanisms for the plant to protect against virus infection. Because when the plant is infected with viruses, uh, they active the mechanisms by activate the enzyme they have in order to catch the viruses, the nucleus of the viruses in a small, in a small piece. This is a small RNA, then it's purified. Same for sequencing in platform that produce million and million of sequences. And then using bioinformatics program, we can assemble again the genome of the viruses like a piece in a puzzle. So, so using that one, so we are detecting the viruses because they are comparing all this virus genome that has been assembled is compared with the information that is in the clouds, in the repository for all the information or the composition of the nucleic acid from different viruses that have been reported so far. So by similarity, we can say the viruses that we can assemble is similar to the blue one so we can identify in that way. I think this part is finished, David. So if you have any question from the participant, please. We actually have a few questions. Yeah. Um, the first, and they all revolve mostly around um, hands-on training. Um, and how, how we can get hands-on training to, uh, to some of the participants, particularly, I think, similar to what you said in the ELISA, I know we've done SRSA training in Kenya and Ghana and a few other countries, but um, how can we obtain, how can we get this hands-on training? Training for which one, for everyone? Well, 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 for virus detection, whether it's ELISA, PCR or SRSA. I think SRSA would probably be not yeah. real applicable in the field, but you showed, for example, that ELISA was. Yeah, ELISA was. Uh, the only 
So we, we had different different uh, people that have been training in different countries. Probably one of them they are in, in, in Kenya, in Nairobi. So see, they had a chance to join in, in some uh, projects which uh, had a, the opportunities to have training so they can apply for that one. The other one is that there is some uh, picture like this one, the PowerPoint that I have sharing with people in order to, to do the test. Remember, the kit is very simple. So people uh, that, know, that know how to know about viruses, only because the, the kit has a, a instruction, like a recipe for cooking. They say, try the packet number one, add water, mix this well, do this one, export this one. So you can do it. At the end, the only that is important for people to know is how to interpret the results okay, at the end. So if you have a membrane with different uh, color, spotting color, in this case, purple color. So they had to say, okay, this is the result I had. I know my plan number one, two, three, four, one are infected, the other plan are not infected. How to interpret is, is the most important for people because if they know the purple color mean positive, that's it. So in this case, in this case, that no matter if the intensity or the color is strong or mild. The only the only matter is here is to know if the plant is is infected or not with viruses. Okay, the intensity or the color is probably is more useful for breeders, which are, for instance, uh, testing the the plant, the plant they have uh, has some kind of resistance to viruses or not. Those plants having some resistance to viruses, of course, the reaction are negative or very mild color in the purple one, right? So I okay, think- that's, that, 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 that's, that's an excellent topic because Nora Sahino has a uh, question that don't resistant varieties hide infection? Or is it that they actually don't have viruses? Yeah, uh, remember uh, different techniques has a threshold of detection. For instance, more sensitive, more sensible in detecting low concentration of the viruses are the molecular ones, okay? Because this molecular test, you can do directly from sweet potato tissue. In ELISA, you have problem because you had plants which are symptomly, or the concentration there is very low. So you are detecting using ELISA to detect the virus, probably you have negative results, but that does not mean that the plant is not infected with viruses. The problem is that ELISA are not able to detect that low concentration of virus in the plant. Okay, how, how, how do people, when, when we talked about um, training and, Mostly what you talked about is the uh, ELISA kit. How do people obtain the ELISA kit? Uh, sorry, no, I can't understand the question. Okay, the question is, you were mentioning that uh, doing the ELISA um, system is fairly simple. Yeah. How are those kits available? And to my understanding, most reactions would be to a single virus. So you would need to have, do it three or four times to get three or four, to see whether you have one of a collection of viruses. Yeah, the, the kit is, uh, the package of the kit, it, it depends, For commercially, you can you can uh, get the, the kit for a specific viruses, for instance, for fairy motel, just to detect fairy motel or for chlorosis stand. In the case of the kids that we are distributing distributing here from CG Court in Lima, Peru, uh, the kids had the antibodies to detect the 
10 viruses at once. So you can collect the sample, oh. you have to make the, the spotting 10 times, or say 10 members, right. you can be spotting. So one member is for, for virus one, the second member is for virus two, and so on. So at the, at the once, you can detect 10 viruses. Okay, and we'll come back to that on exactly how the the SIP kits are available. I think we should probably move on to make sure we get to the uh, uh, last part of your presentation, and then we can ha open it up for a general conversation where we can have the participants actually interact. Yep. So no more questions? No, well, for now, let's go ahead and finish the workshop and then we'll have the questions and answers. Thank you. Okay, I'm going for the third part of the presentation now. I think with the knowledge that you have gathered so far, so you can understand how we are controlling viruses. So I can open my presentation there and then share here. You can see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. So with the, with the knowledge that we had sharing so far, so this is the, 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 the clue in order to to apply measuring for controlling viruses on sea potatoes. Here, this part is just focusing on control of viruses. So this is just to remind you that we can control all the viruses. We have to focus on those which are more important for us. So then I can go back because I have to put the pointer there. Okay. So remember this one. Okay. So for controlling, we need to know which viruses are affecting our sweet potato plants. So you can use any of, of those we had uh, previous, previously discussed or present in the second part of these presentations. So important here is to take care of the most important viruses, which cause severe diseases because viruses are in misinfections, okay? So, so far the most important we are considering are ferrimote, chlorotistan, and liquor. I mean, begomovirus, virus, and potivirus, okay? Why? Because when they interact, like this one, very model is transmitted by aphid. Chlorotistan is transmitted by wildlife. When they interact in misinfection in the plant, they produce this disease, sweet potato viral disease, SPVD. So the plant infected with SPVD, which is the interaction of these two viruses, affects larger the production of the plants. Okay? In some cases, the impression is so strong that the plant does not produce roots and the plant later die. So for the controlling, so the most important for you have resistant cultivar, this is the first option, okay? No matter si in your country you have a resistant cultivar coming from natural or, or normal breeding or plant genes, the idea is to use that one because this is more stable long term in the control of viruses. So you don't have the resistant cultivar, maybe you can use the superior local 
resistan cultivos. La economía en, en, en África deja Kenia, deja de, de I guess, deja displante material a Nuka Wogo, a Camera, por ejemplo. Es no, some varieties that have been used in some countries and probably they are included in the team bank collection so they can deploy so you can ask for those material in order to use to first option for control environment. If no, the second option is just to produce healthy planting material or planting material which has been tested to be free from pathogens. So this material you can obtain by in vitro collection, because usually in plant gene bank, plant has been treated to eliminate virus from the plant and they are maintaining a free from viruses. So you can, you can start using this in vitro free viral free planting material. Or si you don't have this chance, maybe you can go for one alternative. The first is the better, but the alternative that you can use is also by using positive selections. What do mean positive selection? You can go to one sweet potato field and select the best from the best. That means the best field in which uh, the disease is minimal, and from those fields to select the best plants. That means those plants which look healthy, or those plants that have produced very well. So you select those plants in order to propagate for further planting material. So the idea here is, any, in any ways, coming from the in vitro material or, or positive installation, you have to propagate the plants in protected areas in order to maintain the sanit sanity of this material. Here is a comparison, for instance, from coming from propagating in vitro material from one national institution and this is from one private institution. In both cases, they are starting with this clean material propagated as basic material inside areas protected with nets. And later, this material is propagated in open field. This open field are selected some uh, in places where the pressure of the insects are very low, or in areas which is isolated from commercial sweet potato field. The idea here is just to keep the sanity of this material longer. But there is not necessary to have very, very nice uh, a screen house or netting house like this one. You can use the rustic areas protected with net as farmer does in, farmers do in Philippines. But you can see this is very simple. The idea is to protect your mother plants here in order to propagate time by time and keep the sanity of your material. So you are propagating this clean material in the open field. So you have to apply some measure in order to reduce the reinfection of this material by spraying, preventive spraying insecticide in order to control the insects vectors, aphids and wildflies, but also by eliminating the plants 
which are suspicious to be infected with viruses because now you can recognize which plant can be infected according to the symptoms they, they, uh, they show to your eyes, remember? Chlorosis, stunting, morphine, leaf reduction, and so on. So the idea here is to eliminate those suspicious infected material in order to reduce also the virus source for which see some insects coming here, they don't move the virus to another plant. This is a view regarding the plant coming from local farmers here in Peru and Cañete. And this is the plant coming from high quality planting material. You can observe the stunting, the, the performance of the plant here are very, very, very well compared with this one, which is uh, showing some kinds of chlorosis, but also the growing is less compared with these green ones. Okay. At the end, when you are harvesting, that we, that we have is this one. Okay. This is the root coming from one plant that are we producing a healthy planting material or quality material. And this is the root coming from plant produced by farmers. So you can observe the difference here. So the production of the, of the plant is two or three times higher compared with the local farmer. Of course, if you want to keep the sanitation of your material, you have to apply some phytosanitation practices in order to to reinforce the, the sanity of your material by planting, for instance, by isolation. This means planting new fields 15 meters far from all fields. That this is just to avoid the reinfection of your material. Also using barrier or intercropping with maize, we can protect from the movement of the insects from one one field to another, or reducing the virus sources, that means just to look for those plants showing symptoms and eliminating this whole frogging. See, this frogging is, is, is done during the first month after planting, have better uh, results. So you are doing later, so the effects in the reduction of infected plant is minimal. So the clue, the, the, the clue here is the clue here is just to do the 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 rowing as early as possible. Also, you have to eliminate some other plant we can act as virosols, like wild Icomea species, or also destroying crop residues, the crop residues, because so you let there in the field, some insects can move on those, from this material to the new field. So the idea here is to destroy them by burning, for instance. That's only just to show you that using barrier like maize or barley, you can reduce the movement of insects in between fields. Yeah. So this is one experiment with with it's some time ago here in Peru, in which the the reinfection was minimal in this is is around one percent no more. So you can control viruses is because you would like to have field like this one with good stand and high quality in spite of having this field with poor stand and low fields. So probably one of the question is, so you are using new healthy planting material, how long I can propagate to produce our own material for next season? All will depend where you 
you are the field. So your field are close to other sweet potato field which showed infected plants. And you can see high populations of insect vector. Probably you had to change your material quicker than in the case this insect vector population is low or there is no any virus source around your field. So all it depends on this. Okay, just only to summarize what we are talking about control. Here, remember, we are controlling viruses, we are important. Viruses which affect the yields, have wide distributions, mm -hmm. disseminate very quickly, or are difficult to control. So that's the viruses we need to control. But first, we need to know some about the viruses, like the nucleic acid, the protein, they are, they have also how, how many plants they can affect, only sweet potato or other species, how they are transmitted, by seeds, by contacts, by aphids, by white flights, what kind of symptoms they produce and so on. So this information is important for us in order to develop some detection methods. See, this problem is similar to other countries, so that no matter because information is available in the internet, so you don't need to develop new technology for detection. You can use the one that, they, that people are using in other countries, okay? So we, can, we want to control here, remember, the prevention is the clue here. So a better control is just to prevent the establishment, development, and dispersal of the viruses in the field. So the idea is with this prevention, have high performance and good yields in our fields. So how we can do this well? by using variety with resistance, not only to the virus, probably some of them as resistant to the vector also, or using high quality planting material. This one had to be complement with phytosanitary measure, like discarding plants, making rogging, eliminating volatile plants, which destroy the crop residues, also controlling the vector by applying insecticides or planting new fields, sweet potato field, far at least 15 meters from all sweet potato fields. Or using barrier or intercropping with maize, for instance. In the case so that we are dealing with viruses which are transmitted by contact, so here the disinfection of farming tool, machinery, and reducing, redu reducing of the traffic in the field. So it's a, it's a good measure to apply in this case. Of course, when we are eliminating infected plants, we call negative selection. When we are selecting the best from the best plants, that's called positive selection. Remember this one, because you don't have the chance to have better good quality of your material, probably you can select your own material doing this positive selection. When you are controlling vector, not only controlling the field. So you are storing some roots and these roots are sprouting. So you have to control also the, the insects in those sprouting because insects can move viruses from one tuber or roots, which sprouts having viruses to another roots with sprouts 
which have no viruses. Remember that one. Important to note about the epidemiologists. So the epidemiologists is just to know the viruses in order to understand, to apply better the control. See, we can observe here this triangle in which we have the plants, the virus, the vector, in which the environment also in, in, inter, interferes in this reaction. So they may the disease, the increase in the time more quick or less or less in the time. For instance, you have to consider to consider si there is any sources of the viruses present in our area as polluting plant showing symptoms, plant probably uh, that can be from infected fields, close to infected plants in, 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 in previous field, which, because which also not only are, will be infected with viruses, but also they increase the population of the insects, which are vector for transmitting viruses. So you have genetic resistance, so you can use, because this reduces the speed of the disease. Also, you need to know see the, the viruses can infect weeds or another species because they are they are sources of the viruses as well. How the virus is transmitted by contact, by vector, which vector are involved in the disease. See they are aphids or some other insects or other vector present in the area. But also about the environment, we have to take about temperature because temperature can affect the symptom expression, but also increase the population of the insects. See, the temperature is high, like the El Niño phenomenon we had some times ago, they can increase the population of insects, which uh, can move more quickly the the viruses from one field to another field. Also the, the quality and the nutritional status of the soil, because it depends if the plants are more susceptible or less susceptible to the virus infection as well. Taking this into consideration, so maybe we can ask him, is, how viruses are disseminated over long distances. So here you have the, the, the answer. So if you had active insect vector or you had infected planting material, so you are propagating long distances. Okay, because you, you are moving the viruses with the material or by the aphids. Aphids or white flies, when they are in the wing, yes. the wing, they the, they the, the insect and move long distances as well. More active are aphids compared with the white flies. Yes. Also one question here is, which plants is more attractive for insect vector. This we are stunting a yellow color or this showing normal color. Of course, plant infected showing some chlorosis, yellow color are more attractive to the insect vector. So that's also one reason why we had to eliminate this this is a plan from our fields. Also, in which of these plants, the virus concentration is higher. Usually, plant showing severe symptoms means that the concentration of the viruses on the plant is also higher. So, 
not only are attractive for the insects, but also is allowed to the insects to, to take the viruses and move more easily those viruses to another field because they are attractive, but also concentration of the virus is high. So more easily for the insect to take the viruses to transmit to other plants. Looking at this one, this is different cases. So this is season one, season two, season three. So you have your field. You observe, this is case one, case two. The direction of the wing is from left to right in both cases. So you observe that season by season, you have random plant, affected ran, uh, infected plants are random to fill. Probably the problem is because you are using planting material infected with viruses. But in the case too, so you observe when you are planting sweet potato, that the plants that are in the border which is in the direction of the wing, this means that probably the problem is coming from other, other field in which insects are involved because they are with the wing is coming to the first plant in this border. So looking at the distribution of the infected plant, you can have an idea where the problem is coming. Look at this one. So we had how the white fly dispersed in the field. They usually you can observe here some patches here, here with yellow ones. Almost this is multiver. You can observe. This is mean that white fly are colonizing these plants surrounding as patches. That's here. In the case of sweet potato, it's very rare you have to observe aphids colonizing the plants. This is only happening when the when the aphid cannot have another plants around in order to colonize. So usually so you can move your plant, probably you can observe only what fly because normally the aphids come into the sweet potato, fix, yeah, uh, introduce the style, prove the plant, and then move to another, another, and fly. So it's very rare yet to, to see aphids colonizing sweet potato plants. This is the effect that the wildflies produce in, the, in our field our plants in the field or sweet potato fields. Yeah, one damage is because the white flies sucks the nutrient from the plants during the feeding. So it's made the plants more susceptible to be affected for other pathogens as well. Also because when white flies feeding in this plant, they produce honeydew, which a lot the growing of fungi, which gives an, a, a plant color in the leaf, which interferes with the photosynthesis. But also the most important is because white flies transmit viruses. So there, there are three effects that we can observe for the white flies present in our sweet potato fields. And I think not only to have the knowledge is intelligence, but also how you can use this knowledge in practices. So that's the reason why I have given in the first two parts of my, of my presentation specific knowledge that then they are using just to control viruses. So si you have knows that one, so you know that always when you have a problem, 
you can observe presence of insects, for instance, wildfly. By sure, the problem is coming in one virus which is transmitted by wildflies. Okay. So you only cut insects in the field, but no plants are infected with viruses, you will have problems with the pest, but not with viruses in your plant because the, the, the insect is in, can be in your field, they are feeding, but as your plant has no viruses, they are not transmitting any virus, but they are causing the another effects, as I mentioned you. These two effects on the plant. Okay, I think David, this is all from my side. Please let me know if there is any questions. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if I can ask um, Antonella or Viviana to allow anyone to uh, to raise their hands and we can have them ask a question. And while that's going on, let me reiterate that probably for the smallholder farmers, the most important strategies for reduction of virus in your fields is isolation, 15 meters was discussed, interplanting with another crop species, maize and barley were two that were mentioned, roguing, removal of infected plants, and this has to is most effective when done early on uh, during the first month. Eliminate any wild Ipomea sweet potato species, and there are wild Ipomea, to my knowledge, on the African continent. And that when you do rogue plant material or you do have infected material, to eliminate and destroy the crop residue that you pull up. Let me start with the questions because the major question that we had revolved around training. Segundo, how can the participants in these various countries get the training they need to either apply the detection methods or to continue efforts in keeping their material clean? Yes. I think this is a good question about that one. Because training, now we can do like this one, like virtual ones, okay? We can do that one. We have different, I think, different videos that people can use in order, in order to learn by themselves about different techniques, different uh, uh, problems they had to solve, that one. This is one, one, one good point. The other point is that because uh, you had one friend here at SIT and also to Davis, they can contact to you directly in order to, to see what the problem is, what they can do, how they can do the test. I'm more than happy to people to contact to me in order to, to show some specific training on, on that one. At some time ago, but this is no, it's not the case today. So people from, from CG Quarter, a move to different countries in Ghana, in, in Madagascar, I think, also in Malawi, in Nigeria, different countries in, in, in Africa to do the training, presential training there. So it's now the difficult is funds in order to, to people just to to do that kind of personal training in different countries. As you know, David, 
So the other reason why we also are doing this this training by virtual because of funds. We don't have enough funds just to do any training. Uh, we would like to do usually for me, in my point of view, it's better to do the training in place because in place you are using all the facilities that people have in order to teach how they are using those resources in order to do in the best way the, the training, the, the learning. That's the reason why I show you the, the picture of doing the LISA test in Salomon Islands. So people, they don't receive any specific training before. Okay? They only uh, doing the test in minimal condition there. So the idea, because at that, I remember in that point, they say me, oh, we don't have any labs to do the test. We don't need any labs to do the test. I say, we can do it in my room. So I asked him for one small table. And then they say me, but we don't have any, any distilled water. But I say, but you have car here, right? So car use batteries. Batteries need distilled water. So let's go to those places in which you can buy the, the batteries for car. So they had distilled water there. And they say to me, oh, how we can measure the volume of the, according to the protocol. They say 100 milliliters, one milliliter. I say, okay, let's go to the pharmacy. Let's go for syringes there, one ml, five ml, something like that. But let's go also to the markets in order to, to this container for babies, which had a measured volume there, huh? 10, 15, 100. So you can use as well. So container for the buffer, I say, use the container you, you are uh, yeah. from the soft drink. When you finish your soft drink, just yeah, keep that one. So we can use that one as a container. To that one. So this is the, the, the way you have to do, baby. Okay, thank you, very good. Placid has a question about why viral infected plants attract more aphids. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is because of the, the, the yellow color, the yellow color are more attractive for, for, for insects, not only for wildfly, but also for, for, for aphids and wildfly. Also, I know mentioned that, but infected plants produce some chemicals. I would say odors, like that one, that also is a chemical uh, attraction for, for insects as well. So people, different, different researchers have demonstrated that infected plants produce some chemical which attract insects to the plants, yeah? So this is the, the reason why the, the plant showing symptoms, especially yellow color, are attractive for insects, vector. Okay, thank you. Th there was a suggestion that I think is very good, which, that the upcoming World Potato Congress is being held in Adelaide, Australia. And would it be possible for SIP to give a small workshop, hands-on workshop on virus detection at that, uh, at the World Potato Congress. It may have to be focused on potato, but you know, detection methods from potato would also work on sweet potato. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe discuss that at SIP and see whether there was a possibility of doing something like that? Uh, it depends on funds, I should mention. That. I agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah but it, it depends also See, this is a, a, as a need for uh, included in, in, in our plans also. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't matter about the different detection methods because the one you are applying for, for one crop, you can apply for any crops. Yeah? So it's, it's similar, it's similar. The principle is a similar one. The only, the only thing that you have to take care of is the critical, the critical steps in each detection method, because 
some detection methods are critical. If you are not doing well, so you have nothing as a result. Okay? That's the point. Thank you. Now, you mentioned that uh, people could contact you as well as they can contact me. Um, to get our contact information, uh, if you're outside, if you're inside the CG, it's easy to type our names. If you're outside the CG, uh, I don't know if it's easy to give it now or perhaps just send a very quick note to um, to one of us or one of your associates, and uh, I'm sure we can answer. You can get our emails and we can answer the questions for you. Yeah. So. Yes. So, <laughs> as you are in the project, uh, David, I think you can you can you can act as a focus for any question that probably is also the interest for more people because. When they have some doubts and you resolve this doubt, probably it's the same doubt that most people have about that one. So if we can share this uh, solution and these uh, doubts, we can spread more to more people. It's the best for me. Agree. Very nice. Okay, I think we are out of time. Just. Almost exactly, Segundo, you did very well. Yes. And for all the participants, myself and the project, I want to thank you very much for this very informative um, lesson, workshop, and all this knowledge that you shared. This workshop was recorded and um, it will be available probably give us a week or two to uh, to make it available, but we will try and reach out to the attendees that we have the email address for and uh, let you know where the uh, recording will be placed on the web so that you can access it at a later date to verify it. And also please reach out to either Segundo or myself with any questions you have. So thank you all for your participation and uh, I will bid you all a pleasant day, evening, and uh, a super holiday season. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, we touching with you when you want. Okay, so I am available. Now I have more friends. Oh, yes. Thank you all very much. We're signing yeah. off. Yeah, David also, you can feel free in, in sharing my presentation with people who are interested on that one as well. Okay. Thank you, Segundo. I think the recording might be equally as valuable. Thank you. Okay. Saludos. Bye.